What are soldiers' best and worst weapons in MVM? Here we go again, boys. Today we're answering that question with yet another MVM tier list. Same rules as last time. This is a two cities tier list. It's made from the perspective of a solo queuing player, and each weapon is ranked based off their utility within the respective weapon slots. So yes, rocket launchers and melee weapons will be in the same tier as each other. No, this does not make them equally as good. Let's go. So normally I start things off with the D tier, but the rocket jumper is just so much of a meme weapon that it deserves its own tier. If you're using this weapon, you're trolling. There's absolutely no getting around that. And if you're trying to seriously use a rocket launcher that does no damage, I've got some crayons to sell you. They make a pretty good snack. The stock shovel does about as much damage as those shitty plastic ones you buy from Walmart. It's completely worthless for both damage and utility, and even in a world where it would do good damage, Soldier is still too slow to ever land the hits anyways. The Market Gardener has the exact same problems as the stock shovel. It doesn't have any form of utility, and the damage output makes it almost never worth using. I guess you could crit a robot sniper or maybe knock out an uber medic or something, but I just can't imagine any reason to seriously use it. The only pain this weapon trains is making you take 10% more damage from bullets for literally zero upside. In fact, the pain train is literally the only undeniable downgrade in MVM. Its only benefit is capturing objectives twice as fast. If I ever find a payload cart lodged in Manhattan, I'll let you guys know, but until then, this thing is a complete joke. The only way to do damage with the Mantreads is by blasting yourself to the clouds and falling into a pack of robots with brute force. This strategy is only viable if you're going for the world's worst KD ratio in MBM. All that risk and all that setup for less damage than what you can get from a single rocket. Why? The gunboats operate off an easy premise. The soldier rocket jumps a lot, therefore reducing the damage of rocket jumps is good. But in MVM, you stay relatively stationary, rocket jumping maybe 20% as much as you do in casual, so that makes the gunboats 20% as effective as they normally are. And even then, there are far more easily accessible heal sources that get you up to full in MVM. So this is probably the only mode in the entire game where the gunboats just aren't viable at all. Like the pistols for Scout, I'm lumping all the soldier shotguns together because they all suck ass for the exact same reasons. The shotguns are only effective at close range, but you already have a weapon that'll kill every robot before they get within 10 feet of you. I guess it allows you to shoot reflect pyros without any risk of death, but I think we can all agree that barely matters at all. The Liberty Launcher does shit damage and has fuck all to make up for it. The faster projectile speed doesn't matter, the self damage nerf on rocket jumps is barely a factor, as mentioned with the gunboats, and while the extra rocket is good, sacrificing 25% of your damage for it is never, ever worth it. Oh, but you can upgrade the damage! Yeah, and you can upgrade the clip size on every other rocket launcher for the exact same price, and get more than one rocket for the same credit investment. In no world is this weapon ever worth using. This weapon can one-shot samurai demos, and that's a good enough reason to put it in the C tier. Yeah, they can one-shot you back, but if you let them aggro onto something else, it really isn't an issue. I know you can also self-damage yourself with it to regen uber akin to the Boston Basher, but because it takes so long to pull out, you're better off shooting yourself and using a more appropriate melee. Oh hey, it's the more appropriate melee. The equalizer may have zero uses in combat, in fact it's probably worse than the shovel in that regard, but it does allow Soldier to stay at a lower health threshold for 90% longer than he otherwise would. And this allows your team's medic to farm uber off his self damage for an even longer period of time. This only happens on earlier waves though, thanks to the more frequent pauses between robots, but it's enough of a niche to not be useless. The Bison is TF2's biggest meme weapon, which is why it might come as a shock to know it's actually not that bad. It's pretty cheap to upgrade, and its default projectile penetration makes it pretty good for hitting several packs of robots at once, and even sometimes a tank alongside it. That's something that no soldier weapon, even all of his rocket launchers, can ever do. So even though it's a worse option than the rocket launcher in most situations, I think it's powerful enough to justify the C tier. The base jumper has one trick, and that's to make the airstrike an absolute beast. For every other rocket launcher, the base jumper is a complete waste of a secondary with zero practical application. Yeah, I know you can avoid fall damage, but you can do that with the man treads too, and we all know where that shit landed. 
A lot of monkey brain newbies see the direct hit does 25% more damage and think bigger number equal better weapon, but for the direct hit it's the complete opposite. For starters, Valve has this stupid tendency to bottleneck any weapon with a damage bonus by not allowing them to get more than 3 ticks of the damage upgrade, so on later waves this damage bonus ends up meaning fuck all. But more apparent from the get-go, the soldier's best trait relative to all the other classes is his crowd control, and the direct hit completely strips him of that strength in favor of greater single target damage. It has its moments on giants and tanks on earlier waves, but that trade-off on a class that is very AoE oriented will never ever be worth it. The airstrike is the trickiest soldier weapon to rank because it has one insane strength coupled with a barrage hack, get it, of weaknesses. At its maximum potential, the airstrike has the single greatest burst damage of any soldier weapon, and can fuck up any giant in the game in a matter of seconds. But you need to get 5 kills with the weapon to top off its clip size, you need to rocket jump every time you want to use it, you need to reload all 16 rockets after firing them, and the Achilles heel of needing to equip the base jumper to stay in the air long enough to get the burst. It also does less damage and has a worse blast radius, making it a downgrade for crowd control. But I don't know man, that burst is way too good for this thing to be any lower. The black box used to be the fucking OG when it was a straight 15 health per each robot hit with your rockets. But now it's capped at only 20, so it's a shadow of its former self. It gives you slightly more survivability in exchange for less sustained DPS due to having one less rocket in the clip, meaning you'll be reloading more often. It's a decent trade and probably will save your life here and there, but man, I remember when you could solo some sections just by using this thing. And now you can't. At the very least, you don't need that much health on kill, if any, and in my opinion, that's what justifies the B tier ranking. And for the third and final rocket launcher in the B tier, we have the Cow Mangler. So this weapon is basically the same as the stock rocket launcher, with one big upside but a few negating factors. And no, that big upside is not the charge shot. It doesn't stack with firing speed upgrades, and the fact it uses your entire clip makes it unbelievably useless. Now the Cow Mangler's best feature? Not needing to rely on ammo. So at the very least this becomes the best rocket launcher in the game if your team's engineer sucks dick. But then come the nerfs. You become shit at dealing with robot engineers, which sure only matters on a third of the waves, but Soldier is usually the go-to class for taking out robot sentries if they're ever built, and now he won't be able to. But the bigger and more general issue comes in his inability to get crits, not just randomly but through canteens and the Kritzkrieg as well. This makes it not that good on later waves because you have a lot of extra money to blow on crit canteens, but in most other situations, this for its non-reliance on ammo isn't the worst trade in the world. The melee, where its best use is running away, is surprisingly one of Soldier's best. The escape plan will very likely save your life at least a couple of times on each mission. On the surface, it might not seem that good, because bullet robots have perfect accuracy and can snipe you from afar while you're marked for death, but you're usually able to work around that through navigating the map's geography and manipulating the robot's aggro to not focus on you. It also allows you to get healed up safely and return back to the fight without having to go through the trouble of dying, respawning, and running back. In my opinion, it's Soldier's second best utility based melee. Alright, let's get this out of the way. All three banners are very good items. I just think that the Battalions is the most situational, and therefore the weakest. 35% more damage resistance and nullifying critical hits from robots has its moments where it's a fucking guardian angel that saves your entire team. But those moments are few and far between on earlier waves, and on later waves you're usually topped up on resistances and don't need it as much. It's also always worth using if you're doing the 4 soldier strat on bot bash, but compared to the other banners, it's just generally not as good. For the second best rocket launcher in the game, we have Soldier's All Reliable, the stock rocket launcher. This weapon just does it all. It has really good damage, really good crowd control, and all of this with 0 and 8 negatives to balance it out. It's really good at every single range in the game, which can't be said for number 1, and is extremely forgiving when you mess up thanks to its untouched splash damage radius. And of course, one tick of Rocket Specialist removes all the damage fall off on a direct hit, and helps keep the Super Scouts from getting by with its minor stun. It's extremely consistent, and actually might be the most popular rocket launcher in MBM. it's just not the best.
Soldiers' melees have gotten a reputation for not being all that important, and while that is still mostly true, after using the whip for a while, I found out you can use it in so many situations during the downtime of some waves. If your rocket launcher is fully loaded and you don't have a banner ready to blow, then you may as well give you and someone on your team a speed boost, because why not? It can give soldiers' rocket jumps more momentum, it lets Heavy get his maximum damage ramp up slightly faster, and if you and a teammate are both working on the tank, the whip can help both of you get back to the front when need be. Its only real issue is that the whip has no situation where it's beneficial just on its own. You need a teammate for it to work. But in MVM, teamwork is the name of the game. Bigger number equals better weapon. It's not necessarily always wrong. The buff banner gives you and all members of your team within range mini crits, a 35% damage bonus to everything. And unlike something like the Fano War, this can be used to make dealing with clusters of small robots so much easier. It recharges so fast that you can usually fill the bar within just a few seconds worth of DPS, so you'll be pumping your team's numbers all the time and it's without a doubt the best banner to use on tanks. The only real issue with the buff banner is the same one that most mini crit weapons have, and that being that the constant spam of crit canteens at high levels of play makes the effect kind of obsolete. But at every other level of play, I'm confident with saying that the buff banner is the best secondary. And now we have the secondary that's the best at high level although it's still very, very good at low and mid levels as well. Everything about the conch is just so useful. The passive health regen is one thing, but being able to get health back on hit, akin to the mad milk, combined with the added speed boost, changes the game for everybody on your team. It lets the heavy do maximum damage ramp up without fear of death, it lets soldier completely solo some portions of the wave, a la pre-2015 black box, and the speed boost allows your entire team to avoid projectiles much easier and get back to the front lines much quicker. And of course, this effect isn't invalidated by crit canteens. So its only real downside is that it doesn't really help in dealing damage towards the tank. But that's a small enough sacrifice for all the benefits it gives you and your team. And lastly, we have the soldier's best rocket launcher, and in fact soldier's best weapon in the entirety of MVM. There are so many reasons as to why the beggar's bazooka is absolutely broken too numerous and too intricate to really explain in this video. So I'm mentioning right now that I'm making a whole video dedicated specifically to the Beggar's Bazooka and explaining why it's not only the best rocket launcher, but the best by a significant margin. But to TLDR that video for the tier list sake, bigger number equals better weapon. And the Beggar's Bazooka has the biggest number of them all, by far, not even close. If you want to be notified as to when the Beggar's Bazooka video comes out, you should subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. I got a shitload of MVM content coming out that I think you guys will really like, so I'd appreciate it if you stuck around for that. So that's it guys, see ya. Oh yo! Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh that was sick.